overtime goes into playoff mode tonight. 13 games in all on our schedule. I'm going to borrow this for tomorrow to be live on the air. See, Tammy, how about that? <laughs> Valley View and Mountain View meeting in what they call a Kansas City playoff, which in all the places I've lived only happens in Idaho, not in Kansas City. <laughs> Jay, I just want to know where you got the hat from the caddy shack. Actually, uh, I am the Irish Paul Bear Bryant. Once the clouds started disappearing, you got a little snow going away. It was just really easy to find blue out here on Fremont Street. The NCAA says Boise State has shown a lack of institutional control over several infractions that have added up to a major violation that includes men's and women's tennis, track and cross country, and Boise State football. The response comes after the Idaho statesman made a public records request for Boise State's response dated on April 25th to the NCAA. Allegations are, for the most part, minor or secondary in nature, and Boise State's response does not involve any player or coach's names. Things like players who have yet to officially enter classes at Boise State, staying with current students over the summer, or getting a ride from a current student. Yep, crashing on a future teammate's couch is an NCAA violation, and those athletes have to repay the money. However, in the course of the investigation, the the NCAA stumbled across a case of former women's tennis coach Mark Tishner and an assistant providing cash, lodging, expenses, and entertainment to a prospective player, not to mention practicing with that player and allowing her to compete in tournaments before she was enrolled. Another women's tennis player was allowed to travel and compete with the team after her eligibility had run out. Tishner and his assistant coach were let go by the university last fall very quietly, and now compliance officers will report to the university's general counsel office, not the athletic director. Those are definitely big no-nos, but look at some of the other 22 violations the NCAA had issues with. In the summers of 2005 to 2009, assistant football coaches arranged summer housing and transportation for 63 football players. The staying in spare rooms and on the floor added up to $4,934. Men's tennis, women's tennis, and track and field across country had 16 future players do the same thing, adding up to about $718 over five years. That impermissible housing and the transportation, along with the violations last year by women's tennis, made it a major violation in the eyes of the NCAA. There will be a hearing on June 10th in front of the Infractions Committee. You can read more on the story on our website, kboi2.com, including Boise State's entire response, which details the dollar amount each student athlete had to pay back. That's all online at kboi2.com. Now, fresh off a weekend that saw former Bishop Kelly star Josh Osich throw a no-hitter for Oregon State, College baseball is undergoing an obvious change. A new era of aluminum bats is bringing baseball back inside the fences, and it's quite the adjustment for coaches and players. The all-too-familiar ping of the bat has a different ring this year. Well, as a pitcher, I'm enjoying the new bats. This season, college baseball, from the NAIA to the NCAA, has gotten manufacturers to change the bats players use. I know across the country you look at some of the top ranked teams, teams with 15 and 20 home runs where they used to have 60 to 100, so it certainly changed the game. The move is in part safety with batted balls flying back at pitchers and fielders in excess of 100 miles per hour. Now the fundamentals are back on the diamond. Last year there was half the balls were out of the yard and half, half were in, you know, but this year it's, it's a lot different and you have to really focus on putting a good swing on the ball and kind of playing small ball. And that's another reason for the move. With colleges acting more and more as another feeder league to the pros, players that can do more than mash home runs are at a premium. But there is always a cost. You look at the College World Series NCAA, they're just building a new stadium that costs, I don't know how much money, but I think a lot of people go there and they like home runs. All right, time for some frosty goodness and the Dairy Queen Player of the Month. Ben Shuey of Middleton High School has been selected as the DQ Player of the Month. Ben is batting 333 with 11 RBIs and one home run. He's also thrown 33 strikeouts in only 22 innings. Ben recently signed a letter of intent to play Division II baseball at St. Mary's University in Lacey, Washington. Congratulations to Ben Shuey, the DQ Player of the Month. I'm Paul Kingsbury for IdahoSports.com. Remember, you can nominate your favorite player for free ice cream by logging on to our website, kby2.com, contests, and emailing the folks at idahosports.com. The UFL draft came and went today. No Boise State players went in it. Tonight at Ice World, the high school hockey season will continue. With only a few weeks left, the top team in the state, Meridian, looks like they are on their way to the finals. And the story behind their starting goaltender, Joey Tardiff, is something that caught our attention. Joey Tardiff didn't start out as a goalie, but he stepped between the pipes this year to lead Meridian to the doorstep of another championship. It was because I used to be a player. I was one of the players that was a lot of good in that, but I had an anger problem. 
So I'd get a lot of penalties. My mom said the only other option is goalie or you can't play hockey anymore. He doesn't stop until he hears a whistle, so he'll run everything over all the way to the net. And we decided that it was a little safer to, for the other players just to put him in net. <laughs> With Joey's sparkling record this year, you might think the transition was easy for the not-so-gentle giant, but his drive and determination on the ice actually come from somewhere else. Joey is mildly autistic and um, gives him no gray area. It's one way or the other, there's nothing is ever in the middle. It's, he can make the best save on earth, and the next time he'll be waving at someone in the crowd as the puck is coming down. You gotta get his attention back on the game. In a hockey game, goaltenders spend most of their time alone on the ice. But it should surprise no one that Joey's teammates are there for Joey in so many ways. With the friends thing, sometimes we have other people talk crap about us and that, but we're winning right now, we're number one, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it helps him to handle his emotions and his anger. If something upsets him, he's learned that there's penalties in real life just like on the ice, so he settles them down quite a bit. If everybody doesn't work together, nothing works, and that was the biggest that he learned that on a, you're on a team. So. With Joey in goal, Meridian is again the top team in Idaho going into the state playoffs at the end of the month. And with his father looking on, Joey and his family of Warriors are ready for another state title. What I love about playing hockey is just being out there with my team and my friends also. They're kind of like my family, my team, when I play with them. Because we all encourage each other to play as hard as we can. And that's what I love about it. It's just like a family game. It's like family.